Good morning, folks. We've got a full slate of news here today, including earthquakes, hail, top science news, and more. We are starting with our star, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun, still with those bright, active regions turning through. They are crackling and popping at the umbral field level, but remain unable to produce proper sunspot groups beneath them. Surrounding the equatorial group are the next coronal hole openings. Dark incoming north and south of that bright area, they will be facing Earth by tomorrow. The solar wind remains quiet. We had a slight rise in stream intensity following those cosmic ray error spikes, and even though it is not major, it was enough to keep the KP index up off the floor the last day. Top quakes hit six range near blot echo depths in Chile, and then a larger one in Tonga where they took a strong blot echo at the low velocity zone just four hours before that one struck. Let's go next to Australia, where a hailstorm raged across the south and took out up to 80% of the crops in some regions. They say the storm only lasted a few minutes, but that was all that it needed. Apart from a little run over Tasmania tonight, it should be done for now. Let's go to space where the Voyager 2 spacecraft is in focus. After visiting the planets, the Voyagers have been on their trek into interstellar space. You might recall it was one year ago today that the solar wind detection dropped out, galactic plasma and cosmic ray density soared. Well, one year later, they are calling it officially. All data has been reviewed, and there is now no doubt that it wasn't a one-off event, but rather, indeed, the true crossing of the craft into the galactic space, allowing us all to come to grips with the fact that Epstein didn't kill himself. Alma up next, revealing spiral arms and a nascent stellar system. They say that as the planets come together, we also have an interesting binary disk and gradient features within the disk. They are able to pick out the ridges of the spirals. That link is a good one. Let's go out even further next to the Crab Nebula. In radio waves of accelerated electrons, infrared re-emission of photoionizing energy by dust, the optical wavelengths our eyes can see, plus the ultraviolet, taking us much closer to the images of the heavens we've come to know from Hubble, and of course the X-ray component of the superheated gases. They combine to form a symphony of space violence that, many are aware, has a central pulsar that gives the entire structure a bit of a heartbeat. Today, we are finding that the highest energy gamma ray production from the core of the nebula does not match up with its radio bursts. They once thought that they would all come together, but that's simply not the case. Mystery official. We're going to go much farther out to the Perseus Cluster next before bringing it home to close. Galaxy clusters are groupings of dozens, hundreds, or thousands of galaxies, and in the case of Perseus, it is a supercluster. As we zoom in on the region of space, the first thing you want to notice is the traffic jam of galactic features, each its own massive stellar neighborhood. And sitting at the dead center is a monster galaxy with a dusty, gaseous, filamentary outflow and large-scale structure. Today, we're going to add a bunch of little blue dots to the image because those are the detected globular clusters. We've only got about 100 in the Milky Way. They were painstakingly discovered and cataloged over decades. And today, we are seeing how the newest technology reveals thousands of them in the snap of a finger. Last but not least, fun week for those in the frontier of climate camp. The next major climate conference has been kicked around the globe with it now finally finding a home in Spain. Meanwhile, Love him or hate him, this is one of the most critical things Trump has done. You don't need to like misogyny to recognize good science. And while toxic chemical pollution and deforestation both need to stop, CO2 is plant food. The UN, NASA, Princeton, Yale, and Harvard are all singing different climate tunes now, and the media isn't speaking a word of it. Watch Climate Forcing to learn more. Both a short version and full movie are available linked below the video. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.